Water is a scarce resource, and many countries, especially in the Middle East, are already struggling to meet their water needs because of a lack of available fresh water. As climate changes and populations rise, this problem will only worsen. According to the World Wildlife Fund, by the year 2025, two-thirds of the world's population may face water scarcity due to global warming-driven droughts. Supply cuts are also looming in the southwestern U.S. As the mighty Colorado River begins to dry up as a result of overconsumption and climate change. The question is, how can we get a hold of this problem? Currently, there are a few desalination technologies, like the NEOM solar domes in the desert or nanomembranes, making seawater drinkable in minutes. Let's see how nanotechnology can be used to lessen the impact of freshwater shortage. Globally, more than 1 billion people don't have access to drinking water, and 2.4 billion don't have access to basic sanitation, most of them from developing countries. In the U.S., drought issues have a big impact, especially this year when a lot of regions are experiencing higher temperatures and low rainfall, a deadly combination for the populations of a country. In some areas of the Southwest, since 1990, the entire region has been drier due to moderate to severe droughts, and the average temperature has risen by as much as 2 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1.11 degrees Celsius. Lake Mead is the main source of potable water for 40 million people in seven states of the American Southwest. From there, 90% of Las Vegas water supply originates, produced by closing off the Colorado River at the Hoover Dam. Even though it is one of the greatest water reservoirs in the world, Lake Mead also serves as a hydropower plant, providing clean electricity for 8 million Americans. Each year, more water is lost from this enormous pool. The Colorado Rocky Mountains are also losing their snow cover. More water is lost to evaporation from the ground and plants in the areas where snow has not fallen. As a result, the amount of water that flows into the river and then into the lake has decreased by around 140 feet, or about 44 meters, since 2000. The lowest recorded lake level was June of last year, and the current level is only 36% of its maximum capacity. So this affects not only the drinking water, but also the electricity generation, which is using enormous amounts of water. If you think you can make an impact and you try to go cut down on your drinking water, don't bother. Drinking, washing, and toilet flushing all combined only account for about 8% of our freshwater consumption per year. Instead, agriculture irrigation is guilty for using up to 70% of our freshwater reserve. Now, based on the UN World Bank, droughts could force 700 million people to migrate, and such a massive climate migration could stir up political instability across the globe. So what can we do to get out of this situation? This is where nanotechnology comes in. You've likely heard of the conventional method known as reverse osmosis, which has its own set of drawbacks. To recap quickly, you force salt water through a semi-permeable membrane, which retains the salts but allow the pure water to pass through. It's simple, right? Yes, but it's energy demanding, and typically you would burn fossil fuels to get the high pressure that you need to make it work. As a result, desalination plants around the world already produce 76 million tons of CO2 annually, a number that is expected to soar to 500 million tons if we are unable to discover a low-carbon alternative by the year 2040. However, there is even an additional ecological price to pay. Being heavier than seawater, the byproduct of reverse osmosis is a highly concentrated salt solution called as brine, which is currently being thrown into the ocean. Brine accumulates in the ocean's deepest regions, where the excess salt kills marine life by depleting oxygen supplies. Recent research has shown that the amount of brine produced by a reverse osmosis plant can be as much as twice the amount of pure water produced by the process. Saudi Arabia, which is located in one of the top nine areas that may experience water stress, is working on a greener and cheaper desalination technique. By 2040, the Saudi government hopes to have the Red Sea converted into a fresh water supply for its people. In order to desalinate water using solar energy, they are creating the world's first solar dome as a part of the NEOM project. This cutting-edge structure uses concentrating solar power technology which consists mainly of a huge number of mirrors aimed at a glass sphere to concentrate the sun's rays. By doing so, the seawater in a massive metal pot will evaporate due to a localized greenhouse effect. They can then collect the water by pumping out the steam and letting it condense. The developers claim that the facility will run entirely on solar power, making it carbon neutral. However, there is still the issue of waste brine. 
NEOM plans to use the resulting salt for battery components or use it as fertilizers. And yet, there's still no clear plan for it. Anyway, solar domes aren't the only option. For instance, Korean scientists have developed a nanofiber membrane which removes 99.99% of salt from the water using a polymer as the core and a silica gel as the shell. The process is quite complex. They built a composite membrane using a process called coaxial electrospinning, where they use two syringes to feed two fluids into a nozzle. And a high voltage creates an electrostatic field between the tip of the nozzle and a nearby revolving collection plate. The droplet spreads out and forms a filament under the revolving surface, creating a nanolayer of material. Electrospun membranes are water resistant. This procedure has been a major challenge for membrane distillation, so that's great. Water distillation was stable for 30 days for the research group. Commercializing nanomembranes could help solve the freshwater shortage, but it's important to understand that this has only been tried in labs. Energy X, another business, raised $20 million for direct lithium mining. South American salt flats supply most of the world's lithium. Drilling a hole to pump out metal-rich brine and putting it in evaporation ponds for months wastes a lot of water. It takes around 500,000 gallons, or 1.8 million liters of water, to make one ton of lithium. That's enough water for 3,500 people for a year. Lithium mining uses 65% of the Solar de Atacama's water, which is ridiculous considering local farmers need to source water from elsewhere. The startup uses highly selective metal organic framework nanoparticles, or moths. Moths can be made into different shapes and patterns to meet the filtering needs. In this case, they are starting with lithium, but it could also be used to get salt out of water. The best part is that the system is easy to scale. Now, it's clear we need to pay more attention to the value of fresh water and use it in a more responsible way. But scaling up sustainable desalination technologies will be important. Do you think these new nanotech freshwater solutions can help? Jump in the comments.